So glad to be with you today. I am excited about what we are planning for you this week. I'm going to be airing all this week the God Generals videos that we've sold millions of, millions of around the world. The reason why I'm doing that because when there's a crisis in a nation, people run to God. This virus pandemic may be the beginning of a great happening. It's a sad what's going on, but out of it there may come a thirst and a hunger and a movement toward God. I want you to be ready to be the revivalist and the bold Christian to take care of what may be coming to us. So I'm going to be telling you the stories of great men and women of God, those that have done well and those that have made mistakes. We'll look at both those equally and respectfully. We'll be looking at Catherine Kuhlman, Smith Wigglesworth, John Alexander Dowie, A. Allen, Jack Coe, William Branham, William Seymour, uh, Evan Roberts, Mother Edder, all the different revivalists, Martin Luther, the great reformer. So I want you to stay tuned this week. Always be watching. Every day will be a brand new general. Sit down with your family. Watch the show. Build your faith. Learn what they did right and what they did wrong so you can become the next great general in God's great revival. Hello, my name is Robert Lairdon. I'm sitting outside of a tent that represents a 1950s event in America that went for over 15 years. It was a time when God chose over 150 different evangelists that we call the healing evangelist. that went around America in these canvas cathedrals as they call them, preaching salvation and praying for the sick and getting results. People's eyes were open, their deaf ears open, their legs were made strong, great miracles. And these are men like Jack Coe, A. Allen, Orr Roberts, William Brennan. These are just a few names that God chose to lead what we call the 1950s healing revival. This movement caused a change in how we believe today. The healing as we know it today is still a part of all parts of Christianity, mainly because these men and women pioneered it and said they're not going to back off of something they believed that was true, and there was results in it. When I was a little boy, about 12 and a half years old, I was watching my favorite TV show at that time called The Vernon Shirley. Jesus walked through the front door of our home and I was sitting on the couch and he walked toward me. And he walked toward me, the whole room seemed to move back about five, six hundred yards. And I could hear the TV in the distance. And Jesus said to me, study the lives of my generals, know why they succeeded and why they failed. For there will come a generation who will need to know the things that I will teach you if you will be faithful to do what I ask you to do this day. And he said a few other things to me about restoring gifts and unwrapping gifts and helping gifts come back to their full potential as a part of my call and my destiny that he wanted me to do in my life. And so when the vision ended, I went back to watching TV. People have said to me over the years, well, why didn't you get up and pray? Why didn't you get up and read your Bible? Well, I was 12 and a half years old. When you're 12 and a half, you go back to watching TV. And so later that afternoon, or I should say early in the evening, uh, my grandmother handed me a book about the life story of Smith Wigglesworth, a great British healing evangelist. At first, I thought, who wants to read about preachers? Because in my life at that time, most of the ones that I'd experienced were overweight, their hair was goofy, or they had no hair, and most of them looked like a bunch of boring people. And I thought, who wants to read the story of these preachers and their lives going from church to church, singing the same songs, preaching the same sermons, and eating the same fried chicken? And so I didn't really want to get involved with it, but when my grandmother handed me Smith Wigglesworth's life story, I began to read it. And that changed my whole life. When I began to read about the British evangelist named Wigglesworth, who raised a man from the dead that was named Lazarus of all names. Now that got my attention as a little boy. That's more exciting than a football player, than a, than a movie star, than a famous singer or a president. A British guy that was a plumber raise a guy from the dead, and the first time he didn't come back, the second time he didn't come back, and the third time he pushed him against the wall, let him go, he fell onto the floor, still dead, and all of a sudden he opened his eyes and stood up and was back from the dead. So that began a journey in my life. I began to read all the books I could find about revival movements and revival leaders, men and women from Pentecostal to evangelical, even back into the early church fathers, and see, why did God choose these people? Why did God move on them this way? What did they have to overcome? During this TV show, we're going to be going through the lives of different men and women. We'll have rare footage, rare, rare pictures. We'll have voice recordings. We'll have a few people that we'll interview that will actually have worked with these different individuals like Sister McPherson, Catherine Kuhlman, Branham Allen, Co. or Roberts, different ones we'll look at. I wrote my first book and I didn't think folks would get that excited about it. So I thought, you know, why would folks want to know about church history? 
But church history is a very unique thing. The only real book in the New Testament that does not have a proper end is the book of Acts. The book of Acts just stops where it says Paul rented a place for two years and received those who came to him and taught them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the book just stops. Well, that means to me that we're still writing the book of Acts today. And we call that church history. The reason why most of you don't like church history is because people that teach it don't know how to teach it. Number two, they don't have an anointing to teach it. Number three, all they think is it's facts and figures and dates and rises and falls and theological controversies. Well, that's not church history. That's not what moves a heart. That's not what births a new gift that's inside of you. What births a new gift is when you realize that ordinary people that God chose out of the vastest of the human population, he chose this one and gave them this gifts, and gave them that anointing to go into the earth on time. Another thing that is a mistake that we sometimes think, well, these people were born out of season. Every gift, every anointing is born on time, in season, and they're never late. The earth may be late, the church might be behind, but God's calling and God gives us always on time. So I want you to make a determination to be with me every week. So as we go through the lives of these men and women to learn what they did right, what they did wrong, and how they overcame and fulfilled their destinies. What you've heard on today's show is only a small fraction of the incredible stories of another one of God's generals. For the complete story, pick up a copy of God's Generals, Volume 1, today. This historical classic contains the compelling spiritual biographies of 12 extraordinary heroes of faith, men and women who were dynamically empowered by the Holy Spirit to ignite the fires of revival worldwide. You will discover how they achieved their amazing successes and how you can become a victorious leader for God. In this volume, you will be captivated by the lives of John Alexander Dowie, Maria Woodworth Eder, Evan Roberts, Charles F. Parham, and William J. Seymour, John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Catherine Coleman, William Branham, Jack Coe, and A. A. Allen. Order a copy today or other life-changing books by visiting robertslearden.com. That's robertslearden.com. Or by calling 1-877-888-1500 for U.S. residents or 1-941-748-3883 for viewers outside the U.S. Roberts Learden accurately depicts without bias the good, bad, and the ugly so you can learn from the lives of God's generals. Order your copy today. There was a knock at the door of a man's home in Australia. It was a child from down the street had come to get Pastor John Alexander Dowie to come and pray for a little child that was dying. He had just received a revelation from Acts 10, 38, how God healed those that were sick. He ran down the street, prayed his first healing prayer, and the child was healed and did not die, nor did any of the members of his church die during the great Australian plague of that year. In this first series, we're going to look at the life of John Alexander Dowie, the great Australian healer who came to America and came to Chicago, built a great church of over 3,000, eventually 10,000, then built a city, but died thinking he was Elijah. When Dye moved to Chicago, he heard from God that he was supposed to stay there. He became the spiritual mayor of Chicago. D.L. Moody was across town. Dye was on the other side. So he had the two great evangelists of the day in the city of Chicago, which was the great booming city of that time. You could not become the political mayor of the city unless Dye had approved you and told his church members to promote your campaign and to make sure you won office. At the end of his time in Chicago, he did a series saying, uh, demons, doctrines, and drugs, throw them all out. And he made a distraction and made them all nervous in Chicago while he went during the daytime about 40 miles north of Chicago to buy up 6,600 acres to build a city called Zion, Illinois, where he created a utopia that to this day in American history was the longest running successful utopia in American history. Dr. Dowie, though died, thinking he was Elijah. We're going to look at his life and find out why he made it, why he didn't make it, and what we can learn from it. We're also going to look at a woman named Maria Woodworth Eder. We call her the grandma of the Pentecostal movement. She was the holiness preacher who decided that speaking in tongues and divine healing and the gifts of the Spirit were for today. So she stepped out of the holiness uh, anti-feelings toward the young Pentecostals and said, I believe in them and joined them. Her ministry would grow to have over 25,000 people in a tent meeting a night. She was back in the old timey uh, tent days where you got the old trucks and the old open cars. And this woman traveled around America with her tent, preaching and praying for the sick. And she was accused of uh, having trance evangelism. What would happen when she would start preaching, folks would fall into trances and see heaven, see hell, see Jesus, see an angel, see a demon. And they'd come back and tell what they'd saw when they're out in the spirit. We're also going to look at a young man from the United Kingdom named Evan Roberts, a Welsh revivalist. One of the greatest stories of revivals in modern times, but also one of the saddest. He was 26 years old when God chose him to lead the great revival. 
but yet he only preached about three years of his life. He died in 1951. He was taken out of Wales after he had collapsed one night in a revival meeting by a woman named Jessie Penlewis. He never returned to Wales after she died. Jezebel came and destroyed that young man's life and ministry. We're going to do an in-depth study on why he made it and why he failed. And then we're going to look at the next great happening in world history called the Azusa Street Revival. A man named Charles Parham and William J. Seymour, a little black man. Then in the time of the Jim Crow laws in America, God chose to be the first pastor of the modern Pentecostal movement. The most famous address in Pentecostal history is 316 Azusa Street. We're going to look at it and find out why God chose him to do it, why God chose him to be that certain person, because God makes statements in the heavens and the earth. He makes statements to the church and to society. And when he chose Parham and he chose Seymour, he was making great statements that we can learn from today. Nobody is escaped from God's voice or God's plans. What you've heard on today's show is only a small fraction of the incredible stories of another one of God's generals. For the complete story, pick up a copy of God's Generals, Volume 1 today. This historical classic contains the compelling spiritual biographies of 12 extraordinary heroes of faith, men and women who were dynamically empowered by the Holy Spirit to ignite the fires of revival worldwide. You will discover how they achieved their amazing successes and how you can become a victorious leader for God. In this volume, you will be captivated by the lives of John Alexander Dowie, Maria Woodworth Eder, Evan Roberts, Charles F. Parham, and William J. Seymour. John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Catherine Coleman, William Branham, Jack Coe, and A.A. A. Allen. Order a copy today or other life-changing books by visiting robertslearden.com. That's robertslearden.com. Or by calling 1-877-888-1500 for U.S. residents or 1-941-748-3883 for viewers outside the U.S. Roberts Learden accurately depicts without bias the good, bad, and the ugly so you can learn from the lives of God's generals. Order your copy today. We're also going to look at a man named John G. Lake. He was born at a time in his family when all he knew as a child was doctors and hospitals and hearse and caskets and graveyards because so many of his family members died. When he got married, his wife was going to die. And he sent a telegram to John Alexander Dowie and said, if you can pray and help us, please pray. And Dowie prayed and his wife was healed. And because people around the town knew that John G. Lake's wife had been healed, they began to come to his house and ask Lake to pray for them. And he didn't know what to do. So he moved his whole family to Zion, Illinois, and learned how to pray for the sick and get miracles under the ministry of Dowie. He would later go to South Africa and built one of the first Pentecostal denominations called the Apostolic Faith that is still going today. While he was there, they would take the germ of the dead that had died of a plague going through and put it on his hand and watch the germ die because the lake said, the law of life in Christ Jesus sets me free from the law of sin and death. John G. Lake had 100,000 documented miracles in Spokane, Washington in five years to where the United States government declared Spokane the healthiest city in America at that time. John G. Lake, a phenomenal man. You won't want to miss that day either. What you've heard on today's show is only a small fraction of the incredible stories of another one of God's generals. For the complete story, pick up a copy of God's Generals, Volume 1 today. This historical classic contains the compelling spiritual biographies of 12 extraordinary heroes of faith, men and women who were dynamically empowered by the Holy Spirit to ignite the fires of revival worldwide. You will discover how they achieved their amazing successes and how you can become a victorious leader for God. In this volume, you will be captivated by the lives of John Alexander Dowie, Maria Woodworth Eder, Evan Roberts, Charles F. Parham, and William J. Seymour. John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Catherine Coleman, William Branham, Jack Coe, and A.A. A. Allen. Order a copy today or other life-changing books by visiting robertslearden.com. That's robertslearden.com. Or by calling 1-877-888-1500 for U.S. residents or 1-941-748-3883 for viewers outside the U.S. Roberts Learden accurately depicts without bias the good, bad, and the ugly so you can learn from the lives of God's generals. Order your copy today. The United Kingdom has always been a part of the moves of God on the earth from the 1600s, the 1700s, the 1800s. But when they hit the 1900s and the Pentecostal movement came to the British Isles, great men and women began to explode in the United Kingdom. Men like Howard Carter, George Jeffries, and the most famous Pentecostal personality from the United Kingdom is a man named Smith Wigglesworth. He was a stutterer who could not speak a declarative sentence without breaking up with stuttering and his embarrassment kept him out of the public flow for many, many years. He began his life with Christ working with the Salvation Army. 
In those days, the Salvation Army was the revival movement of the time. If you want to be where God was moving, where God was speaking, where things were happening, you join the Salvation Army, and Smith Wigglesworth did that. That's where he met his wife, Polly, in one of the Salvation meetings that he was attending. And the Lord spoke to him, that's your wife. So he goes down to meet her and takes possession of her in one way. And she was kind of taken back by his abruptness. But long story short, they got married and had a great, great life together. After her death, Wigglesworth decided not to stay home and sit in the chair and be sad. He decided to go to the world. So the Wigglesworth ministry that you and I know about began mainly after his wife's passing. So one thing we can learn right up front about Wigglesworth, no matter what kind of tragedy comes to you, God can make something good come out of it. So he got up out of his rocking chair and got up out of his little house in Bradford and went to the world. He came to America. He went through Europe, Scandinavia. He went to South Africa, went to Australia, New Zealand. He did those trips many times. And so Wigglesworth spent his life praying with the sick and believing God for the lost to get saved. His manner of, of praying with the sick was not your typical way that we do it today where people lay hands on you nicely and you fall down politely and somebody catches you. Wigglesworth was more of abruptness. He sometimes would shake people. He sometimes would kind of hit them with his fist. And, and he said one time, I pray for you once and that's all you need. The second time, well, that's unbelief. And he'd push you out of the prayer line and said, I don't allow unbelief in my prayer line. And then he sometimes would ask, uh, his critics would ask him, why do you hit people? He would say, I don't hit people. I hit the devil. They just get in the way. We're going to look at Wigglesworth, his salvation experience, his baptism of the Holy Spirit, him learning how to heal the sick, and his worldwide ministry. He's more famous today than he was when he was alive. And his stories of his unorthodox manner of praying for the sick is still legendary in our Christian circles today. We're also going to look at a woman named Amy Sybil McPherson. No one else has been like her since the day that she was born and the day that she went to heaven. I call her the first lady of Pentecost or the first star of the Pentecostal uh, movement. She was bigger than life and uh, her life story has so many ups and downs. And I guess you could say when you talk about her, you're going to learn about the good things that she did and the good things that God did through her, about the humanity and the problems that she had with her own life and her family and her marriages. But God stayed with her and God anointed her to build some of the most phenomenal churches in the world and built a denomination called the Four Square Denomination that is still active today. Here are some firsts that Amy did. She was the first woman to drive across America in a car by herself. She was the first church in America to own a Christian radio station. Her church called Angeles Temple in Los Angeles had 10% or a tithe of the LA population at that time of over 25,000 members in her church. Hollywood would come to her church on Sunday night to see what she would do in her illustrated sermons so they could take back her techniques into the movies. Sister McPherson was married three times. She was kidnapped and her death even had controversy about it. But the life that she lived still declares that God does miracles, God saves, and in spite of our weaknesses, God can do things through us no matter if we'll just stay faithful and stay true. What you've heard on today's show is only a small fraction of the incredible stories of another one of God's generals. For the complete story, pick up a copy of God's Generals, Volume 1 today. This historical classic contains the compelling spiritual biographies of 12 extraordinary heroes of faith, men and women who were dynamically empowered by the Holy Spirit to ignite the fires of revival worldwide. You will discover how they achieved their amazing successes and how you can become a victorious leader for God. In this volume, you will be captivated by the lives of John Alexander Dowie, Maria Woodworth Eder, Evan Roberts, Charles F. Parham, and William J. Seymour. John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Catherine Coleman, William Branham, Jack Coe, and A.A. A. Allen. Order a copy today or other life-changing books by visiting robertslearden.com. That's robertslearden.com. Or by calling 1-877-888-1500 for U.S. residents or 1-941-748-3883 for viewers outside the U.S. Roberts Learden accurately depicts without bias the good, bad, and the ugly so you can learn from the lives of God's generals. Order your copy today. 1947, there was a young man out in the woods one afternoon. His name was William Brennan. An angel was sent from God's throne to tell him that he had been given two great gifts. The first gift was to know the secrets of men's hearts. The second gift was to be able to do signs and wonders, to confirm that what he said by the supernatural gift of knowing their secrets would be confirmed by a sign and a wonder that it was true. This young man named William Brennan was not raised in a full gospel Pentecostal experience. He was raised as a Baptist, got involved with Jesus only, and then finally made it into the mainstream Pentecostal movement. But when the Pentecostals finally discovered what this guy had, they all went into amazement. 
He was able to walk up and tell people their address, their phone number, where they lived, what was wrong with them, what the doctor said, and then say, now you're healed, and they were. So we're gonna have film clips of William Branham, and we're gonna learn about the great prophet that was on the scene in 1947 that died tragically and also died believing wrong doctrines and prophesying wrong things. Your gift does not guarantee you that you have the right doctrines. Your study and your determination to stay accurate with Scripture as you flow in the great gifts God gives you is something that you must do. So many people in life saying, well, my gift will take care of me. No, your gift won't. Your knowledge of the Word will take care of you. Your gift will take care of the souls and the people who need to be born again. So as we look at the life of Branham, we'll see a rise of an uneducated man born not far from where Abraham Lincoln was born. He lived uh, with uneducated parents. He was born and, and raised in a one-room house. And when he was a little boy, he began to have signs and wonders happening to him. The voice of God would speak audibly to him. As he became a young adult, the, the angel came and his ministry exploded. But he died in a car wreck uh, in a tragic place around Christmas time. And the world at that time of Christianity was shaken. How could a man that knows the secrets and do signs and wonders die a tragic death? We'll investigate those things. We'll find out why. Because we don't want you to make any mistakes. We want you to walk across the finish line of your calling in your life successfully, knowing that you preach the right thing, you perform the right miracles, and you've led the right example for them to follow you after you're gone. What you've heard on today's show is only a small fraction of the incredible stories of another one of God's generals. For the complete story, pick up a copy of God's Generals, Volume 1 today. This historical classic contains the compelling spiritual biographies of 12 extraordinary heroes of faith, men and women who were dynamically empowered by the Holy Spirit to ignite the fires of revival worldwide. You will discover how they achieved their amazing successes and how you can become a victorious leader for God. In this volume, you will be captivated by the lives of John Alexander Dowie, Maria Woodworth Eder, Evan Roberts, Charles F. Parham, and William J. Seymour. John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Catherine Coleman, William Branham, Jack Coe, and A.A. A. Allen. Order a copy today or other life-changing books by visiting robertslearden.com. That's robertslearden.com. Or by calling 1-877-888-1500 for U.S. residents or 1-941-748-3883 for viewers outside the U.S. Roberts Learden accurately depicts without bias the good, bad, and the ugly so you can learn from the lives of God's generals. Order your copy today. After William Brenham and Oral Roberts exploded on the scene, there was other great personalities like Jack Coe, A. Allen, and then of course, Catherine Kuhlman comes in with the charismatic movement. But if you'll notice behind me on stage, we've set the set of our TV show with the old time gospel uh, background with the old wooden pulpit, the chairs, the, stre the stretcher, the crutches, the wheelchairs that people discarded when they were prayed for. And so when we come to the 1950s and the tent revivals, this is the scene where people would come in with all different kinds of ailments, all different kinds of handicaps, and the man of God or the woman of God would pray for them, and they would throw their crutches or their, their stretchers uh, aside and start walking and running. You know, Jack Cobb was one of those great men that uh, had a phenomenal story. When we get to his life, you're going to love it. He was a Nazarene that got saved in a Nazarene church, which was almost impossible in those days to find salvation in a Nazarene church, but he did. Instead of saying hallelujah or glory to God or praise the Lord when he got saved, he kept screaming, hot dog, I got it. That's how Jack Coe expressed his excitement over being born again. And he couldn't get uh, himself to sleep that night, so he got up and went out and began to tell folks he could find around town about salvation. And that's how his ministry really began. And then he got spirit filled, and then God called him to preach, and he found out that God heals today, and he started praying with the sick. Or Roberts and Kenneth Hagin both told me that no the person they'd ever seen in their life had the gift of faith flow through them like Jack Coe did. As you will see in the footage when we go into his life, he would just pull gorders off people's necks. He would move people violently back and forth, kind of like Wigglesworth in a way, and they'd get healed. But he died at 38 years of age at the height of his ministry. And we're going to find out why when we investigate his life. Also in this first season, we're going to look at the man called A.A. A. Allen, God's man of faith and power. His story begins with his parents that are called moonshiners. Now, some of you may not know what a moonshiner is, but those are the folks that made illegal alcohol with the light of the moon. Moonshiners from Arkansas is where they were from. So when he was a baby, they would put alcohol or moonshine in his bottle to make him fall asleep and quit crying. So by the time he was seven, eight years old, he would smoke like a pack of cigarettes and could drink with the big men. And so he grew up in a very rough way, but God saved him. And God saved him. He was 100% for God. Actually, God saved him in a Methodist church. 
And uh, when he walked in, a Methodist lady preacher was preaching and she stopped her sermon and said, now what did you come here for, Alan Boy? Because everybody in town knew that Alan Boy was trouble. He said, I just came to listen. And that night he listened and he got born again in a Methodist church. The long story short, he built the great tent and he was one of the greatest miracle men of the last part of the Voice of Healing Revival. And then in his life, he ended in a tragic way. He was accused of being an alcoholic toward the end of his life. And I'm going to tell you if that's true or not when we study the life of A. Allen. But he had miracles. God was with him. And we're going to have a great time with him. Now, the last one of this first season is my favorite because I saw her. Her name was Catherine Kuhlman. Many of you can remember when she used to come on TV. She always said the same thing. I believe in miracles because I believe in God. She was the redheaded woman from Concordia, Missouri, who did not finish high school, who began her life in ministry, helping her sister and brother-in-law travel around the country, taking care of their children while they were in tent meetings. Because there wasn't enough money, they were going to send her back home to Concordia, and she didn't want to go back home. So she decided as a teenage girl, she'd start preaching herself. So her first meetings were in chicken houses, one-room schoolhouses. She'd actually go in there and clean up the chicken houses or the turkey houses, sleep there and preach there. She said, I only knew one thing, salvation. So she made everybody every night get born again. So if you were born again this night, you came the next night, you got to get saved again and again and again. That's how Catherine Kuhlman began her great miracle ministry. But when you say Catherine Kuhlman, you and I only think of the last 15 years of her life. So what's the rest of her story? When we look at Catherine Kuhlman, we'll see the whole story. What you've heard on today's show is only a small fraction of the incredible stories of another one of God's generals. For the complete story, pick up a copy of God's Generals, Volume 1 today. This historical classic contains the compelling spiritual biographies of 12 extraordinary heroes of faith, men and women who were dynamically empowered by the Holy Spirit to ignite the fires of revival worldwide. You will discover how they achieved their amazing successes and how you can become a victorious leader for God. In this volume, you will be captivated by the lives of John Alexander Dowie, Maria Woodworth Eder, Evan Roberts, Charles F. Parham, and William J. Seymour. John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Semple McPherson, Catherine Coleman, William Branham, Jack Coe, and A. A. Allen. Order a copy today or other life-changing books by visiting robertslearden.com. That's robertslearden.com. Or by calling 1-877-888-1500 for U.S. residents or 1-941-748-3883 for viewers outside the U.S. Roberts Learden accurately depicts without bias the good, bad, and the ugly so you can learn from the lives of God's generals. Order your copy today. the next 12 weeks, we'll be here outside this 1950s gospel tent with the sawdust on the ground, with the empty wheelchairs, crutches and braces, the old-fashioned wooden pulpit, discussing the lives of great men and women that God chose for unusual reasons to do unusual things. I want you to be with me every week as we go through the lives of Dowie, Edder, Kuhlman, McPherson, Seymour, Parham, and many others. But another thing I want you to do is I want you to call the number on your screen right now and order this first book called God's Generals. We'll be going through this book the next 12 weeks. I want you to have the book. I want you to be reading it as I teach it to you. So call the number on your screen or go to my website, robertsurden.com, and order the book right now because we'll ship it to you so you'll have it next week ready for this first show to begin discussing the great ministry of John Alexander Daly. 